Hi, everyone. Thanks for the attending of the session talk, Production Scale Containerized Game Platform Practice in Bad Arms. I'm Chen Yu. Today, I and Victor will give an introduction of this topic. It's my great honor to have this presentation. I will give a brief overview of how we leveraging open source framework to firm our application platform. Then Victor will give an example demonstration to show how we have a game application deployed. So at first, let me just do a brief introduction to myself and Victor. My name is Chen Yu Zhang, and I am a software engineer and researcher in Bad Dimes. My base is in Mountain View, United States, and my basic interest and working area is in application orchestration and the Kubernetes scheduler algorithms. And Victor is the advocate in Upbound, who is the maintainer of Crossplane, one of the greatest components we leveraging to manage different cloud provisioners resources. Today's talk will be over three parts. On the first part, I will give an overview for the ByteDance and the, the GAN platform in ByteDance company. Because there is various type of uh, games formations and there are many aspects of the games like the security, etc. We won't cover every aspect throughout them. In this part, we will only cover the part of how we can provide the containerized ability and the, the application orchestration of the game. In this scope, we take we will talk about the practice in bad dance in second part and how we can manage the game server in Kubernetes ecosystem and leveraging different inspiration from open source for the platform. Then Victor will give a brief demonstration in the third part for the game's application deployment in multi-cloud area. So let's talk about some background. So far, uh, funding in 2012, Bad Dance's mission is to inspire creatively and enrich life with a suit of more than a dozen car products, including TikTok, Hellos, and Resource, as well as the platform specific to China's market, including Total, Douyin, and Xigua. Bad Dance has made it easier to and make fun for people and to connect with, consume, and create content. For the games area, we hold a big heart for newers as an egress to provide game to millions of the players around the world. Some of names are in flavor with the Asian market, like the Mobile Legend and the One Piece. Of the games in Badance are using different infrastructure to host their service in platform. For near years, as the game studios growing rapidly and the players become more and more, there are more and more problems and challenges that for the traditional deployment of the game server. It's obvious that the skills bring some of the, of the following challenges in the platform. There are more and more games that access the platform and the millions of players bring the heavy workload for the server. On the other aspect, the player distribution brings some problem. For some latency sensitive games to provide a better playing experience, we need to leverage in different regions in different cloud provider and to make sure limit the effect of the game server breakdown. The modern game server have a lot of complicated components. The result of those is the heavier work for the deployment and the maintenance for the game server. On one aspect, we need to hold a large amount of the instance with complicated architecture. On the other hand, uh, we need to make manage the different infrastructure resource in multi-cloud provisioner. Therefore, we are seeking a way for free a part of the operation efforts. It's natural for us to take an investigation into cloud-native way of deployment. The most benefit 
uh, list as the figure below. The first is the directly from the money. In the old day, we used to release the virtual machine instance manually, and it's hard for management and cost lots of weight with the virtual machine. Using the containers, we can use the Kubernetes easily to control the scale so that we can reduce the cost, as well as the maintenance of highly availability. The second is that we can deploy the application stateless with some template. The Kubernetes will take all over the rest things and we don't need to consider the configurations for the each game server. The third is that Kubernetes will take all the jobs, so we don't need to think about manually for torrents, and it will make the architecture simpler. The latest and the most important is that you can easily construct the application, and we can provide the flexibility for the customization. Then, let's talk about the practice embeddings. The optimized results of the workload is shown as the follow. In the old days, the developer needs to come up with the SRE team together and put many effort in the deployment and the daily operations. Like the configuration needs to be rendered and sent to each of the new virtual machine. Then we also need to design a lot of self-discovery mechanisms we also need to launch a resource in advance, and it will cost a little of time and money waste. For now, the developer can only focus on the template of the application and upload the images. The system will automatically take over the other things, such as the service discovery. We can also use the runtime to provide efficient management for the games in daily operation. From the overview, as the figure shows out, we have leveraged the following four open source in our platform architecture, letting us just discuss a high level design and we will go into detail for the introduction for the practice. The developers can define this template of the server and including its peripheral infrastructure resource. Then the system will set up a trigger defined by the SI team to distribute the application into different Kubernetes servers in the cloud provider. Then this application would be rendered automatically by the Kubella controller into the real Kubernetes object, including the Agonis game server's workload to host the game and the cross plane object to host different as resource. We also use the open cruise manager to inject the system container like the file bits, etc. Let's talk them with more detail. First and foremost is the containerized challenging for the game server. As we know, for from the virtual machine to container, the many man main value is to provide the ability of quick rebound and uh, auto-scaling. We can leverage Agonis as a workload to provide the containerized ability, include the lifecycle management and the auto-scaling for dedicated GAN server in Kubernetes system. In Agonis, we can host a fleet or one pool of auto-scaling of the ready GAN server. When the player wants to have a server to play with and send a session connection request to the backend platform, it will send a allocation request to the Kubernetes API server, which is watched by the controller of Agonis platform. Then it will allocate a GAN servers to the player on provide GAN service. The controller will also watch the status by the SDK sidecar of the game server, including the health check and player's trace. For complicated application, Kubella is using the OAM model to distribute the controller from unmanaged workflow to manage server. User or the developer can define the components dependency and the operation rules in one place with standard. We can let the user define their own components as well as they wished and let the SI teams define the operation strategy. 
For example, if the user would like to define the game server application with the game and the one RDS and the one load balancer, they can just define the application in one YAML files and the controller will automatically pull up the game server and its corresponding resource in the target cluster. We can set up the strategy that after all the resource is ready, the service is exposed automatically to the player. Also, for a better operation for runtime, we combine OpenCruise ability to provide advanced operations, provide better operation and playing experience. We use the sidecar model for the dedicated game server for customization. For example, some game server may not need the fire beats and some may need to have a BI logs agent. Since the user would not want to be disturbed by the operation, like the system containers update, we just use the sidecar set in OpenCruise to manage them so that we can do hot update or in place update without the disturbing of the user to provide a better experience. Then for the various S resource from different cloud provisioner, we will leverage in cross plan to help us build up a unified control plan for manage the cloud resource in cloud native way, which just means we can have just create a resource in Kubernetes and it's corresponding the real world one and manage the life cycle with the Kubernetes contents. As the practice, we can see the conclusion. It's obvious that the cloud native brings a lot of the advantage for games platform. First, we can just split a great big game server into different parts and host them in different containers to provide high availability for and efficiency for the service. Also, for preventing the cost binding for a single provider, it's naturally for the game choose different providers and in current day we can just use them as a normal resource in kubernetes with great efficiency by cross plane for the complicated application the oam model is a great model for us to adapt into in the future we will put more effort in this part including the oam runtime management and the cost solver for leveraging best cloud resource to be a general view, it's become a trend for game platform to go cloud native in nowadays. That's the overview for the practice in our internal platform. Thanks to Vector and let him give a brief demonstration for our game server. Unfortunately, we do not have time to go through the details and explanation of the whole system that ByteDance is building, which is a pity because they're building some really cool things and it would be very useful to go through the whole picture. But as I said, we do not have time for that. So right now we are going to focus on crossplane or to be more precise, we are going to go through a practical demo of how crossplane works and how it fits into the system ByteDance is building. So what do we need to do? What are the needs? And we can split those into infrastructure, services, and application. We might need to create some infrastructure, let's say a Kubernetes cluster. So we need to create and manage Kubernetes clusters in plural. We need to manage our applications running in those clusters or somewhere else. And we need to manage services like let's say a database and we need to do all those things at scale and in a way that anybody within an organization can leverage can use the methods the system to create their own clusters to deploy their own applications to use the services and so on and so forth so it's just as much about managing resources at scale as shifting left and enabling everybody in an organization to be able to manage their own things without having to spend months or years going deep into Kubernetes, into cloud and so on and so forth. So here's a scenario, a simple one. I want to run my applications 
in two clusters and those clusters might be in different providers. Let's say AWS and CEO, just to spice it up. And once we create those clusters, we need to manage some applications in those clusters and corresponding services. There will be a backend application and a database that that application is using. Let's start with clusters. How would the definition for managing a cluster, creating, updating, and so on and so forth in AWS, to be more precise, EKS, look like? The definition could be as simple as this. I want to claim a cluster and that cluster has a name, has some labels that identify which type of a cluster I want. In this case, that would be AWS and EKS and some parameters. The size of the nodes should be medium. I do not know what is the precise size I need in AWS, but that does not matter. And I will show you later why it does not matter. And then how many nodes do we need? Three in this case. And in this context, I mean minimum number of nodes because it is assumed that there is a cluster autoscaler that we scale it up or back down, but not below three nodes. And finally, for me to use that cluster, I need to generate kubeconfig and I will do that in a secret called A-Team EKS. Now you might be confused and say, hey, what is that thing cluster claim? Well, that's something that operator in a company created and exposed as a service. So this is a custom resource definition with a controller called cluster claim. And that cluster claim can have many different implementations. I will show those implementations of how I came to those applications later. For now, just think of this as a very simple and easy way for everybody to consume a service, even though what's behind that service is potentially complex. And if I would like to get that cluster, the cluster defined in that YAML, all I have to do is execute kubectl, say, hey, the namespace should be this one, I want to apply whatever is defined in that file, and go. Now, if I would like to get a similar cluster, a cluster with similar properties in a different provider, let's say Sivo, then my manifest could look like this. This is yet another cluster claim with matching labels that say, hey, this cluster should be in Sivo and should be CK or Sivo Kubernetes cluster. There are a few parameters. They are different than the other cluster simply because in this provider, we might need a smaller size of nodes and less number of nodes. But other than that, the definition is exactly, exactly the same, or at least the structure of the service is the same. And I can confirm that we are talking about the same definition, even though the providers are completely different, uh, can be done by diffing those two files. You can see here that the name is different, ID is different, the labels are different, and some parameters are different, but both are based on exactly the same custom resource definition created automatically, but we are getting there. So to create that cluster, the process is the same. Kubectl, this is the namespace. I want to apply whatever is defined there, go. Now to get to the point that we have services like this, custom resources with corresponding controllers, we need to do two things. We need to create a definition and then implementations of those definitions, which we call compositions. So the definition itself is something like this. We have open API schema that says, hey, whomever wants to work with those compositions, they should use this schema and the schema has some properties like ID and parameters and within parameters we have version, node size, minimum number of nodes and so on and so forth. A simple definition, open API schema that defines what will be the interface through which others can consume the service. And then we can have as many implementations of that schema as we need. In this case, we are using EKS and Sivo, but I also have implementation for GKE, for Azure, and so on and so forth. And each of those implementations is what we call a composition, and that composition implements all the details, everything that is required for somebody to manage a cluster without really going into details of all the services required. For EKS, for example, requires uh, 10 to 15 or 20 different resources to be combined together, but all that is an implementation detail. It is in hands of an operator who creates the service and not for the consumer. 
And the same goes for Sivo, which is yet another composition, and it has different implementation, but it is exposed as the same service consumable by everybody. And the important part here is that you are in charge of creating compositions. You are in charge of defining what it means to have something in your organization. This is not vendor opinion, it is solution. This is a tool that enables you to create your own opinions and based on those opinions, services and combine those services into an internal developer platform. Now let's take a look at what we got, what happened behind the scenes when somebody applied those two simple YAML files. We can see what's going on. We can see all the resources managed by Crossplane by listing all managed resources. And here we have a bunch of role policy attachments in AWS, a couple of roles, a number of objects which are Kubernetes manifests that will be applied to that cluster later on when the cluster is up and running. Because remember, it's not only about creating and managing clusters, it is about creating and managing production ready clusters. And that's not only infrastructure, but also services that are running inside those clusters. And then we have a number of releases, which is a number of Helm charts that will be applied to that cluster. And we have a node group and a cluster and security group. And we have subnets and a VPC and route table and internet gateway. And all those things are AWS resources. And then we have Civo Kubernetes, which is in a completely different provider, but that's how we create cluster in Civo. Unlike in AWS, there are differences, but all those things are implementation details which are in hands of SREs or DevOps or operators and not consumers. From the end user perspective, all those details might be relevant and we can say, hey, just show me what's happening with my clusters. And in that case, we can just list all the objects that were created, which is cluster claims. And here we can see that there are two clusters. None of those is ready because I didn't give it sufficient time. So let's do just that. Let's wait for 20 minutes or something like that until AWS creates the cluster. See what takes a minute or two and then we can proceed. I will not bother you waiting. I do not expect you to wait. So let me fast forward to the end of the process. And I'm back. Here we go. Uh, two clusters are created. You can see that by the column ready, set to true. So clusters are done. Uh, we can see that in case of EKS, control plane and node pool are active. In case of Civo, I made a mistake. I'm not populating those fields. So shame on me. Anyways, if you ignore that I made a mistake, you can see here that both clusters are ready and that's what really matters. And now we can use it to deploy applications and services and a few other things. But before we do that, let me retrieve kubeconfig, which Crossplane stored in a secret after it created the cluster. And then I can use that kubeconfig to do some funky stuff. So kubectl, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the outcome goes to kubeconfig eks yaml. And now we can use one of those two clusters. And to be on the safe side, let's retrieve the number of nodes. And there we go. There are three nodes. That's my EKS cluster. So obviously it exists. It was created by Crossplane. It is managed by Crossplane with drift detection, reconciliation, and so on and so forth. And now I can use it. I can deploy my application inside of that cluster or any other cluster. In this case, I'm using only two, but normally you would need to imagine dozens or hundreds of clusters being managed like this. But before I proceed, let me retrieve kubeconfig of the second cluster as well, so that we can use both. The second one is in Civo, and, and there we go. I have the second kubeconfig. Now I can really use those clusters to deploy applications. I can deploy same applications or different applications at scale or individually. I can do whatever I want because that's what framework, I mean, crossplane platform gives me. Now, let's say that we want to deploy an application and we could create a Helm chart or something with the deployments or stateful set and services and virtual services and so on and so forth. But I want to continue with shift left idea enabling others. So I created a sample, a demo representation of an application. This is not a real deal because you know, I cannot show you confidential stuff, but I do have a composition so I can just say, hey, 
create something that is up claim, application claim, and that something will be a backend application because in my organization I could create different compositions, one for backend, frontend, this or that, whatever number of variations I have, and I will provide it with a couple of parameters, the things that really matter and hide the things that don't. And in this case, hypothetical, what matters is the namespace, the image, and the port through which the application should be exposed. And then I will apply that manifest to the CIVO cluster, and after that I will retrieve all the resources inside of that specific cluster in the production namespace and uh, see what I got. And I got, and remember this is a silly demo, I got the deployment, the replica set, and so on and so forth. Now let's move on. Let's make it more interesting. Let's say that we want not simply an application there, but application with all corresponding Kubernetes resources plus a database and that database in this case could be, let's say, RDS in AWS, and all that should be connected and glued together. How would I do that without going into details how AWS works, how Kubernetes works, how would I do that as a developer, as a consumer of a service? The definition could be like this. Now, the first part, the first of the two resources defined here is almost exactly the same as the one I just applied to Sivo. It is an application claim. Everything is the same except matching labels. This time the type says backend DB. So the same definition will use a different composition that will know how to apply and which resources to create when working with backend applications connected to a database. And then we have a second definition over there that says and I would also like to claim an SQL database and that database through the matching labels should be running in AWS and should be Postgres. Again, I can have, and I do have different implementations, database in Azure, database in Google, database in AWS, MySQL, Postgres, and so on and so forth. But all those things are implementation details. The end user just needs to specify labels and say, this is the provider, this is the type of the database, Go. I mean, it's not Go. You need a couple of parameters like this is the version of the database I want, this is the size of the database. Again, I do not know the real sizes in AWS, but I will say small and you figure it out. And the namespace is production. And finally, create a secret called silly demo and put the authentication to the database there so that the application can use it. So let me apply that manifest with kubectl, etc., etc., etc. You know the command. And then Two new resources were created this time in the EKS cluster, not in Sivo. And let's take a look at what we got. If I list all the resources plus ingresses in the production namespace of that specific cluster, we can see that we got the service and the deployment and deployment created replica set and replica set created pods and we have ingress. But there is nothing really special here except the status of the pod that says create container config error. It is failing big time. But that's normal. It is failing because this composition knows that it should attach a secret with authentication to the database and it cannot attach a secret because secret doesn't exist and it doesn't exist because the database was not created yet. But when Crossplane creates the database, it will create a secret and this pod will automatically work because the secret will be there and it will be able to instantiate itself. Now, if you want to see the statuses of those specific resources, application claims and SQL claims, we can just list those two. And then we see that application claim is ready and uh, the database is not yet ready, but it will be ready soon. It takes five minutes, I think, to create an RDS instance in AWS. So let me fast forward to the end of the process. And now, if I list all the managed resources, I can see a bunch of uh, resources over there. A new security group was created, Internet Gateway, VPC, subnets, objects. Uh, no, objects are from different uh, claims. DB subnet group and what matters the most, RDS instance. And it is ready. So my application should uh, now get the secret it needs and connect to the database. So let me list the resources in the production namespace one more time. And there we go. The pod is up and running. It got the secret it needed. It connected to the database and both of them were created through compositions and we can live happily ever after. Thank you so much for watching. 
I hope that this was useful. If you have any questions and if you have any time remaining, we would be really happy to answer any inquiries you might have. Or even better, come to Upbound Boot and we can chat more over there. Ask anything and I will answer. Thank you so much.